Welcome to the Sports Science Hub's guide to everything you need to know about the fundamentals, sports injuries and rehabilitation. We will help you understand the different types of injuries that can occur, the various rehabilitation techniques that can be applied, and the importance of understanding human movement to aid rehab and recovery. Let's get started. An injury is any kind of pain or physical damage that occurs as a result of sport, exercise or physical activity. Acute injuries refer to injuries that have happened in the moment, such as falling over and spraining an ankle, and usually relate to anything up to 72 hours after the incident. Whereas, chronic injuries are issues that develop slowly and last a long time. They can also be referred to as overuse injuries, such as tennis elbow or shin splints. Types of injuries include a spasm, which is an involuntary contraction to protect muscles by stopping it moving, a sprain, which is an overstretch of a ligament, a strain, which is an overstretch of a muscle or tendon, erythema is reddening of the skin, an avulsion tear, which is a tendon torn off a bone. Edema refers to excess swelling. Bursitis, which is inflammation or irritation of a bursa, which are small sacs of fluid located between bones, muscles, skin or tendons. Tendonitis, which is an inflammation or irritation of a tendon. A contusion, which is a technical name for a bruise and an abrasion, which is when the top layer of skin becomes grazed or removed. Injuries can be caused by a wide range of factors, which can be split up into two main categories. Extrinsic risks, which looks at factors external to the body that can cause injury, such as inappropriate coaching or instruction, incorrect technique, environmental conditions, other athletes or participants, and clothing and equipment. Intrinsic risks look at the physical aspect of the individual body that can cause injury, such as an inadequate warm-up, muscular imbalances and postural issues, poor technique, overuse, and age. Thermoregulation is the human body's ability to control temperature and has the potential to significantly affect performance. The body's core temperature ranges from 36.5 to 37.5 degrees Celsius and is regulated by the hypothalamus located in the brain. Vasodilation is when blood vessels widen to allow warm blood to flow near the surface of the skin, where the heat can be lost to the air. And vasoconstriction is when blood vessels narrow to reduce the flow of warm blood in the surface of the skin and reduces heat. There are a number of rehabilitation methods that can be used after an injury has occurred. Depending on the severity of the injury will depend on the most effective rehabilitation strategy. Let's take a look at some of the most popular rehab techniques. The most common form of rehab after a mild acute injury is RICE. Rest the injured part of the body, ice the affected area to reduce inflammation and pain via vasoconstriction, compression which can include strapping or taping to reduce the damage of a swollen area, elevation above the heart causes gravity to send fluid back towards the body's core. Massage consists of a series of techniques that manipulate the soft tissue of our body. The benefits of massage include relaxation, reduced muscular pain, including delayed onset of muscle soreness or DOMS, which is the pain or discomfort often felt 24 to 72 hours after intense exercise or activity, stimulation of lymphatic flow, reduced stress and tension, increase mobility and flexibility, aid soft tissue recovery, and increase localised and general circulation. 
Stretching is another form of manipulation that uses a series of techniques to stress the neuromuscular system into improving flexibility. Static stretching is the process of passively taking a muscle to the point of tension and then holding that stretch for a specific period of time. Dynamic stretching is an active extension of a muscle, using force production and momentum to move a joint with a full available range of motion. Self myofascial release focuses on applying pressure to an adhesion or knot, which in turn can help break up knot and release tension. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation is a form of flexibility training that inhibits the stretch reflex to allow the muscle to stretch beyond its protective range. When the muscle is first stretched, the muscle spindles are activated, which trigger the stretch reflex. This means the muscle is contracted to prevent it from overstretching. However, if the individual isometrically contracts against the stretch, the Golgi tendon organs avoid the stretch reflex and relax the muscle. This is called autogenic inhibition. So when the athlete briefly relaxes, the range of movement can be increased beyond the initial stretch. Ice baths, or cryotherapy, is the process of total body immersion into cold water shortly after exercise, in an attempt to enhance the recovery process. Despite the science still not fully understood, ice baths aim to decrease cellular metabolism, decrease inflammation, decrease pain and spasms, and promote vasoconstriction. And oxygen. Research suggests that oxygen can promote the healing process. Hyperbaric chambers deliver 100% oxygen to the injured individual at a very high pressure. This means that hemoglobin becomes fully saturated with oxygen, excess oxygen is dissolved into plasma due to the high pressure, and blood supply is improved, which increases cell turnover and faster repair. This technique is suggested for individuals with soft tissue injuries, connective tissue damage, tissue infection, and compromised immune system. Hypoxic or oxygen tents regulate oxygen delivery to the injured individual whilst they sleep. The body responds to low oxygen levels by increasing production of red blood cells. They do not aid recovery as such can preserve cardiovascular fitness of an athlete whilst they are injured or adjusting to altitude condition. Understanding human movement is essential to maximise rehabilitation and recovery programme. Anatomical locations refer to the different terms that describe specific locations or landmarks on the body. Superior refers to a position above a point of reference. Inferior refers to a position below a point of reference. Anterior refers to a position towards the front of the body. Posterior refers to a position on or towards the back of the body. Proximal refers to a position nearest to the centre of the body. Distal refers to a position away from the centre of the body. Lateral refers to a position further away or outside of the body. Medial refers to a position near the middle of the body. Prone refers to lying flat, facing down towards the floor. And supine refers to lying flat, facing up towards the sky. We can describe all human movement in three imaginary planes that will pass through the centre of the body. The frontal plane creates front and back halves and include movements such as a side lunge. The sagittal plane divides the body into left and right halves and include movements such as running forward. And the transverse plane, which creates upper and lower halves and includes movements such as swinging a bat. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, then please help others find our videos and hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel now. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't forget to also visit our website www.sportsciencehub.com for more videos and everything you need to know 
about sports science. See you soon.